I'll be explaining one of the grade 3 pieces selected from syllabus 2021 and 2022. So this piece is called Disco Baroque, can be found at page 11, C1. Now the title itself tells us a lot about the music. Disco, the term disco is actually a type of music that was quite popular during the late 1970s and until today. So the characteristics of disco music uses a lot of sequence and this piece suggests a rhythmic disco feel with a steady beat, steady drum beat. And disco music is actually meant for dancing. Now we have a rough idea on how disco music should sound like. At the beginning of the piece, 116 BPM was indicated, so with a heavy disco feel. Now, 116 beat was, is not actually that fast. It's in a moderate speed, so we don't have to play it very fast. Now, this is a moderate dancing music. Let's, without a further ado, look at the first four bars of the piece, bar one until four. So, at the right hand parts, we could see the rhythm is similar, finger change as well, and if we look at the melody, they have the same repeated idea, which we call it the sequence. And the melody goes in a descending motion. For example, the first two notes of, uh, the, of bar 1 is G and B, right? And then the second bar goes to F sharp and A. And then third bar, E, G and then the 4th bar, D-sharp and F-sharp. So, we could call this sequence. Sequence means we have the same melody idea, in, but it's either in a higher pitch or lower pitch. So in this case, this music goes in a descending motion. And same for the left hand. The first note at the first bar is E. And then, the second bar goes to D. And then C at the third bar. And then B at the fourth bar. Yeah. So these first four bars is a sequence. Now I will show you how we're gonna play the first four bars. We can't actually play too legato because it suggests a heavy disco feel. So we have to slightly shorten it but not staccato. Instead of this is too legato. And we are not gonna dance this way because remember this is a heavy disco feel, so we have to make it short. But not staccato. Staccato is different. Staccato will sound like this, right? So quaver, we have to make it slightly shorter. So this fourth bar, second up B, is an accent. So this accent, we can actually play slightly stronger. Okay, now let's move on to bar five until 8. This section is similar to the first section, section A, which is bar, bar 1 until bar 4. So the only difference here is the technique, playing technique is different. You can see there are a lot of slurs here. And for the left hand part, no more staccato, but you could tell that the, the notes, especially on the third beat, is now played in the op higher octave. So let's com let's make a comparison for bar one and bar five. Bar one left hand now goes from E, and the A is a lower octave. Now bar five, the A is now in a higher octave. So be careful of that. Now I will show you 
bar five until bar eight. How are we gonna play these four bars with the slur technique? So you could also tell that bar five until eight, the fourth beat upbeat is tied to the next beat which is the next bar. So also be mindful of that. Can hold the tied notes longer. Okay, now as we look at the next section, this is a totally different section. I will call it a section B. So at bar A, third beat are B. It shows MF, and as you can see, there is a slur phrasing. After slur, accent, and then the next slur, accent, slur, and accent again. So how are we going to emphasize this phrase with a moderate loud dynamic? Now I will show you from bar 9 until 12. And be careful of your left hand as well. Because now you are going to have a treble clef change, C sharp and G. So I will show you now from bar 9 until 11. Okay, so you can tell this is also a sequence, right? From the note B and the second phrase A, the third phrase G, and then so on. So remember, this is also a sequence, so therefore the finger change is also similar. So remember to keep your fingers move down one step, one step in order to play the next phrase. They use this exact similar finger change here. So as you can see, bar 11, the third beat upbeat enters with a crescendo and the first note is an E. And then left hand is a tight note. So with the right hand slur and with the left hand tight. So try to co coordinate. I'll repeat this phrase again. So the accent, remember, play it stronger and short, but not too short. Okay, so now let's look at bar 13 until 16. So this section has the similar melody like section A as well with a little bit of variation. So the pickup bar, bar 12, fourth upbeat, the note is an F sharp, right? So F sharp leading to G and B. And it's an FF dynamics right there. So you have to play it very loud at, at this section. The accent, remember, because it suggests a heavy disco feel and with a steady drum beat. So on the downbeat, one, two, three has to be strong. So most of this section, this part has more accents. So now I will show you two hands from bar 13 until 16. Okay, now here is the ending, bar 17 until 19. So these three bars, actually I would say it suggests a little bit of mysterious feeling. 
you can see the dynamic from P and then PP. And of course, let's not forget about the sharps here. From bar 17, D sharp, E, F. So these three notes is a chromatic, right? It actually suggests an eerie feeling here. And ritardando, slow down. And with the pedal as well, don't, not to forget that. Left hand comes in with a very soft dynamic. And then E, but even a lower octave. Take your time. Last note with a pause. So that's it about this piece. So I hope you enjoy learning it.